Dr. Jitendra Singh is a two-time MP from Udhampur near Jammu, polling for which took place in the first phase on Friday. He's been a giant killer in the past, beating the likes of Gulam Nabi Azad from Udhampur in 2014. In 2019, he had an even more decisive win against his main opponent from the Congress, Vikram Aditya Singh. He's now contested from Udhampur the same seat for the third time. Dr. Jitendra Singh is also minister in the office of the Prime Minister and India's science and technology minister. He's also a doctor. Besides politics, he has an abiding interest in science and technology and joins us now. Dr. Singh, thanks very much uh, for being with us. Uh, so are you a somewhat thank you, thank you, relaxed thank leader you, today, sir? Uh, I mean, polling is over. There's nothing you can do at this stage. So are you somewhat more relaxed or are you completely focused on what over the, the summer uh, of hot politics, which is still upon us? No, I, I don't know how to answer that, uh, Vishnu, but to be frank, uh, in Bharatiya Janata Party, you know, we work 24 into 7, so once I am uh, uh, free from the polling in my constituency, I am now, you know, engaged somewhere else. So, it, it continues like that, but yes, of course, maybe that uh, personal level of stress is uh, slightly relieved, because uh, that is a different kind of a, uh, different kind of a, uh, mental sure. situation at that moment in time. Now, sir, uh, the Prime Minister has said uh, quite recently that assembly polls will soon be conducted in Jammu and Kashmir along with the restoration of statehood. In your mind, is that the final step in the restoration of normalcy in, uh, in uh, Jammu and Kashmir that you are looking at? Yeah, uh, frankly speaking, Vishnu, I think uh, after what has been said by Prime Minister Modi, there's uh, neither need nor anything to add to that. I think that should be the, taken as a final word. In fact, uh, that was precisely uh, said by the Prime Minister when he addressed the rally at Udhampur uh, during the campaign. And uh, he did, of course, say that the Assembly elections will happen soon. And so also the restoration of the statehood. And I think that should also address... Uh, apprehensions which were sought to be raised in certain quarters by certain Western interests uh, about government's intentions, which were actually unfounded because uh, didn't have any ground because uh, the same reiteration had been made even on the floor of the parliament uh, by the Home Minister in the past. But nevertheless, since this is an election time, so some of the opposition parties try to create a false uh, narrative, which I think uh, is now uh, must be set to rest after what the Prime Minister has said. Dr. Singh, the Prime Minister also said, and I quote, after decades, this election is happening without the fear of terrorism, separatism, stone pelting, strikes and cross-border terrorism. Uh, and let us just hope and pray that that remains for the rest of this election process. However, are you not worried about what's been happening in Rajori Punch of late, the fact that terrorists from Pakistan remain active in that particular area? Uh, you see, Vishnu, the... the the situation in Jammu and Kashmir was uh, actually had two dimensions. One, of course, was the mischief happening at the borders, both the LOC as well as the IB or the international border. And the second was the militancy within, uh, which was, of course, again instigated by the neighbor and also sponsored. But as a result of that, what was happening is that that has a direct uh, bearing to what the Honorable Prime Minister very rightly said. Elections were happening for almost three decades, one after the other, with a very small voting percentage. And it was, I think, a travesty of democracy that we had a vote percentage of just about 10% voter turnout. And we would elect the MPs and the MLAs, particularly from Kashmir Valley. And they would go on and go on becoming MPs, MLAs, ministers, generation after generation. And in fact, I had uh, dared go to the extent of stating once that they have now cultivated a vested interest in the continuancy of militancy because in the shadow of militancy, the shadow of terrorism, they can have a closed election with a limited voter turnout which would of course be managed by them and then they would manage their victory uh, election after election. Now that it is opened up, I think this is in the true spirit of democracy that we have huge turnout which also happened in the DDC elections uh, uh, which took place for two or three years back after the abrogation of Article 60, we had a huge, huge voter turnout even in Kashmir Valley. And the situation there has, has, has dramatically 
turned for the better, which is, I think, the most evident uh, uh, proof of that is the fact that we had more than two crore tourists visiting Kashmir Valley. Now, no tourist would risk his family uh, just by an assurance handed out by the government or by a travel agency unless he uh, ascertains through his own sources. So that, I think, is the biggest testimony of the situation having uh, got back to normalcy, and that is what has encouraged and emboldened um, the common man in the streets of Kashmir Valley to come out and to also aspire and yearn for true democracy. And to that so extent, I think uh, the, we sure. should give credit to Prime Minister Modi that he has made the people of Jammu and Kashmir realize for the first time what exactly truly is the essence of democracy. And let's not forget the three-tier system of the district uh, Councils also were introduced by Prime Minister Modi for the first time in Jammu and Kashmir after nearly six and seven decades uh, since they had been introduced in the rest of the country. Dr. Singh, why is the BJP not fielding uh, a candidate from the, uh, from the valley? <coughs> your, the, your opponents say that this is a sign of people not having, or the BJP not, not having been able to reach out to people enough in the valley. That's their statement. How would you respond? <laughs> No, frankly speaking, Mishra, regardless of what the opposition says, of course, they would uh, always talk in that uh, genre, but I'm, I'm, I'm not actually accredited, authorized to sp speak on this subject. But nevertheless, BJP, let's not forget, is a cadre-based party, follows a certain discipline, uh, follows a certain value system, and follows a strategized approach. So, in any, any decision taken by the high command, there is a collective consensus based on the inputs from the various uh, 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 factors, the various uh, leaders in the top hierarchy. And, and the, the decision finally taken is based on certain strategical approach, which sometimes is not to be uh, discussed very openly in public or sometimes it is shared appropriately at the appropriate time. So I think whatever decision is taken by the BJP High Command is in the best interest of the party and more so in the best interest of the nation as such. So it's not a family decision taken or a, or a, or a self-righteous decision taken. Every decision taken by the BJP has a very objective approach. So whatever is decided would be in the best interest of each one, particularly the people of Jammu and Kashmir. Uh, so further north, there have been protests, hunger strikes in Ladakh earlier this year after leaders of uh, uh, of Leh, Buddhist-dominated Leh and Muslim-dominated Kargil, they came together. They've been demanding statehood. They want to safeguard the rights of the majority tribal population under the sixth schedule of the Constitution. Uh, it's, it's, a, uh, it's a challenging issue. How do you believe these concerns need to be addressed, if at all? I think, I think we must appreciate that the Home Ministry has been continuously and constantly engaged in dialogue with the representatives of Ladakh, which is quite in contrast to what was happening in 2014. Um, uh, let us not forget, because many of the audience might not have uh, recalled this, that the first ever delegation from Ladakh, which came to the national capital, New Delhi, asking for a unit territory, was way back sometimes, I think, in 1948, which met the then Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru. So, since then, so many governments came and went, so many Prime Minister came and went. It was only after 2014 when Prime Minister Modi took over that this demand of a union territory for Ladakh was addressed. And therefore, if today also there are certain demands being put across, it's because for the first time, the people of Ladakh have this confidence that there is a government in the center headed by Prime Minister Modi, which, which, which entertains them with all the sensitivity at its command. So I think it should be taken in that spirit. Uh, let's talk a little bit about, you know, your responsibilities as minister. Uh, you have been a champion of Indian science. Uh, that's essential, obviously, for our development. Now, Nature in an editorial has said that India has the potential of being a powerhouse in scientific research. Um, you know, when we talk about a strong India, and the BJP has brought this into the election campaign as well, how is scientific innovation a part of it? And should we be talking more about this? Uh, you know, in the election campaign. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. I, I believe so. And uh, I think we have been trying to do so. So also Prime Minister in his campaign. But somehow, uh, most of the opposition leaders and other parties are still, you know, uh, uh, they are conditioned to 
in the kind of campaign that happened over the decades, but now time has come to talk about development, to talk about the new achievements. I think the biggest now, to sum it up as far as science and technology is concerned, after 2014, Prime Minister Modi has encouraged the use of latest technology in virtual every sector, every development and every department whether it be the railway, whether it be the housing, whether it will be smart cities, whether it be medicine, digital health, etc., etc. And the biggest achievement why the world is now looking at India as a force to reckon with is that today we are at par with any other country in the world, maybe a step further. Mm -hmm. Now, I'll just give you a simple example. For example, television happened in the USA way back in 1950s and the famous election of uh, US president in 1960 between uh, John Kennedy and uh, Richard Nixon was decided, the, the turning point, in the, in the decisive turning point was the TV debate between the two candidates, which tilted the tables in favor of John Kennedy because of his oratorial skills. And at that point in time, we hardly knew what TV is all about. Over here, TV started happening only in early 70s. That's also uh, in a very small scale and small measure. Today, it is not so. For example, if we are into quantum technology, we are just about five or six nations of the world in that elite league. We are at par with them. If it is space technology, look at our, our ISRO department was set up in 1969 and that is the year which is remembered for America having landed its first human being, Neil Armstrong, on the surface of the moon. But today, our ISRO has landed Chandrayaan on the south pole of the moon before any other country could. So now the world is looking up to us and also because we have the capacity, the ability to work against odds, against all the heterogeneous conditions that confront us by legacy and otherwise. And, uh, and that, that is one. Secondly, when uh, now referring to the article in the nature, yes. many of our natural resources had not been explored sufficiently in the past six, seven decades, which has also happened in the last 10 years. For example, our ocean resources. Even in the BJP manifesto, the, the coastal area has been mentioned too. We have about 12 states and we have huge wealth lying inside the ocean. We, have the, we are the only country which has an ocean named after the country called the Indian Ocean. Huge wealth of minerals, mines, biodiversity. And now we have started that deep sea mission also, which is going to give a huge fillet because that's exclusive to us. Similarly, our Himalayan resources, our aroma resources, the aroma mission, the purple revolution was born from uh, the, the, the hill areas of Jammu and Kashmir, Uttarakhand, Himachal Pradesh. So these resources are going to add value to the India's economic growth story in the next 10, 15 years when we move on towards 2047. So obviously the world has now become conscious of that, that India is now for the first time and the Prime Minister Modi is not only conscious of its own resources, but is also uh, determined, strategized to make the best use of them. All right, Dr. Jitendra Singh, wonderful speaking to you. Thank you so much for spending some time with us. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Vishnu. Always a pleasure talking to you. Thank you, sir.